organizational structures, informative speech. In this video, we'll review organizational structures for informative speeches. The information in this video provides a general overview. Please consult assigned readings for more in-depth information. As the course progresses, many of the ideas discussed in this video will be covered in more detail. There are three parts to formal speech construction, the introduction, the body, and the conclusion. Each of these three parts of a speech contains several components, some of which should be covered in order. All formal speeches start with an introduction. There are at least three components to a formal speech introduction, the attention-gaining device, the topic statement, and the preview. The attention-gaining device is designed to gain interest of your audience and encourage audience members to listen to your speech. All attention-gaining devices should be related to your speech topic. There are several common ways to begin a speech that help gain audience attention, including making an appropriate joke, using a play on words, referring to the occasion for which the speech is given, referring to the audience member's relationship to the topic, stating a startling statistic, stating a quotation from a person stating something connected to your topic, and telling a short story or anecdote. However you choose to start your speech, it's important to keep it brief. Most attention-gaining devices are only 30 seconds or less. For a speech on the topic of running, an attention-gaining device using a play on words might sound something like this. If you want your heart to keep running smoothly, try running with your legs at least three times a week. You could also use a startling statement to gain attention for this topic, like, Heart disease is the leading cause of death in the United States. According to the Mayo Clinic website, one of the biggest drops in heart disease risk occurs when you go from living a sedentary lifestyle to being active for as little as one hour a week. Once you've gained the attention of the audience, the next step is to reveal the topic of the speech. This component, the topic statement, is usually shorter than the attention-gaining device. Generally, a topic statement is completed in a single, complete sentence. A topic statement for a speech on running might sound like this. Today, I'll explain why running is a great way to stay fit and healthy. A topic statement for a speech on the history of comics might sound something like this. I'll share with you the rich history of comic books in the United States. And a topic statement for a speech on crows might sound like this. In this speech, I will prove to you that crows are some of the most intelligent animals on our planet. The final component of an introduction is a preview. The preview lists the main points of your speech in the order that they will be discussed. Like the attention-gaining device and the topic statement, the preview should be worded as clearly and briefly as practical. It aids audience memory when the points are worded similarly or enumerated. For instance, in a speech about running, a preview might be, I will explain three important aspects of running. First, the warm-up second, proper form, and third, the cool down. The keys to a strong preview are succinct wording, enumeration, and clear categorization. Generally, the introduction of a speech should comprise about 5% to 10% of the total speech time. So, if your speech is 10 minutes, the introduction should be approximately 30 seconds to one minute in length. Once you've gained the audience's attention and prime members to listen to your speech, move on to the body. The body of the speech should cover the main points as listed in the preview. Generally, the body should have at least two, but not more than five main points. Many speeches have three main points. However, having three main points is not mandatory. You should use the number of main points that best fits your topic, trying to have at least two, but no more than five main points. In an informative speech, there are four common organizational patterns used to arrange main points. These patterns are based on time, topic, space, and cause and effect. The patterns described can also be used to organize information within each individual main point as well. Further, some of the patterns discussed here can be incorporated into persuasive speeches, depending on the intent of your message. We will discuss these options in detail as the course progresses. This video simply presents a general overview of organizational patterns useful for informative speeches. A common way to arrange main points in a speech is by when events occurred in time. Time patterns can move from the past to the present or from the present to the past. When using a time pattern, it's important to explain events chronologically in the order in which they occurred. For example, 
the arrangement of main points for a speech on the history of cell phones might sound like this. The first analog handheld phone was introduced in 1979. 2G digital cellular phones were introduced in 1991. 3G digital broadband cellular phones were introduced in 2011. And 4G native internet protocol cellular phones were introduced in 2009. The arrangement of main points for a speech on fashion trends in the 20th century might be arranged like this. Fashion styles from the 1940s, fashion styles from the 1960s, and fashion styles from the 1980s. Another common organizational pattern used to arrange main points in an informative speech is by topic. One way to organize main points according to topic is to use well-known categories for arrangement. For instance, the arrangement of main points for a speech describing the four seasons of a year might be arranged like this. Summer, fall, winter, and spring. Or, the arrangement of main points for a speech on U.S. generations might be arranged like this. Baby boomers, Generation X, Generation Z, and millennials. Speakers do not necessarily need to use well-known categories and often create their own. However, when creating original categories, try to keep the wording parallel and similar. For instance, the main points for a speech on gardening might be arranged like this. Preparing the soil, selecting and spacing plants, and tending to plants to ensure viability. Or, the main points for a speech on blood might be arranged like this. Four major blood groups. A, B, A, B, O the RH factor, and compatible blood types for donation. Another common category for arranging main points in an informative speech is space. Spatial patterns organize information according to how things or objects are situated in a given area. For instance, listing items arranged on the bottom, in the middle, then on the top, or describing towns as passed on a trip from the south to the north. For example, the main points for a speech about recycling at the college might list how recycling bins should be arranged. The first bin is for paper, the second bin is for glass, the third bin is for plastic. The main points for a speech about building a birdhouse might be arranged according to the steps in the building process. First, build a strong foundation. Next, add walls, one with a doorway, and finally, place a roof on top. The fourth way of arranging main points in an informative speech can also be used for a persuasive speech. The cause and effect pattern first states something that has occurred, or will occur, then states what results from it happening. For example, the arrangement of main points for a speech about proper eating habits might sound like this. For good nutrition, eat healthy foods with a proper balance of protein, fruits and vegetables, and grains. Good nutrition will lead to feeling better, more restful nights, and a smaller waistline. The arrangement of main points for a speech on saving for retirement might sound like this. When should a person start saving for retirement? How much should a person save each month for retirement? And how will saving now affect a person's financial health in retirement? Once the body is constructed, it's time to work on the conclusion to the speech. A conclusion for a speech should contain three elements, a restatement of the topic statement, a review of the main points covered, and a memorable statement at the end. A main purpose of a conclusion is to bring the speech psychologically to a close. The conclusion helps tie the speech together at the end. Start a conclusion by restating the topic statement offered in the introduction. You can use the same wording or paraphrase the statement. If you paraphrase, use wording similar to what was used in the introduction. Next, List the main points as they were covered in the speech. As in the introduction, keep the review brief. You can use the same wording or paraphrase a bit. If you paraphrase, again, use wording similar to what was used in the introduction. Finally, end the speech with a memorable statement. Try to align the clincher with what was stated in the attention-gaining device. Like the introduction to a speech, the conclusion is generally short, only comprising about 5% to 10% of the speech's total time. For a 10-minute speech, a conclusion should be approximately 30 seconds to 1 minute. This video offered a general overview for organizing an informative speech. 
Many of the organizational structures described in this video can be used for persuasive speeches as well. We will continue to discuss organizational structures for speeches as the course continues.